Hello, hello. The Phidias Beat here, welcoming you back to another installment of No Action Theatre in XCOM The Long War. This week on No Action Theatre, Jeremy Irons and Kate Winslet star as Steve Loco Irwin and Mary Prometheus Shelley, two members of an elite covert strike team composed of men and women resurrected from the dead and charged with defending humanity from a deadly force of invading aliens. And rest assured that while that certainly sounds like it might be a hair-raising, action-pamped, blood-rousing romp through a tide of battle and glory, it definitely is not. It's really more of a door-slamming fado farce where the team runs from room to room looking for aliens who in turn are running from room to room looking for civilians. It's basically like watching an episode of Scooby-Doo, except without the talking dog and marijuana adult hippie trying to make a large sandwich. So please, sit back and enjoy another dull, soporific episode of No Action Theatre, made possible in part by a generous donation from the Chubb Group, who hope that this episode will put so many of you to sleep that you won't be out setting fires or crashing cards, thus helping to keep insurance claims to a minimum, thus bumping up their bottom line for the final quarter of their fiscal year. Do enjoy. All right, thank you very much, uh, Sir Perfidious Pete there, uh, host of No Action Theater. We are, in fact, deep in the middle of No Action Theater, and I also especially like the part about the Chubb Group. It really would be kind of a coup if people found out that the reason the Chubb Group had been donating to uh, public television for the last, I don't know, 75 years was to try and keep people in their homes and out of trouble instead of out, you know, wrecking shit and ruining stuff. Though, honestly, I gotta say, I, I think that while the conspiracy theorists maybe go, Oh, Pete, you're onto something. That's totally what they're up to. I don't really think you can stick with that one. I mean, if they were really going to try and inspire people to stay in their homes, don't you think what they would do is maybe, like, get some decent programming? I mean, would they really be sponsoring, like, Masterpiece Theater and shit? You could sponsor Game of Thrones with that kind of donation from the Chubb Group. Something that people might actually watch. Ah, uh, you know, I don't even remember what the hell we're doing on this mission, other than that most of the civilians are dead, and I don't really think we have much of a chance of saving any of the other ones. I think I'm going to have a J. Robert Oppenheimer rocket come in here. We do know there are a couple sectoids still running around the place somewhere. There's also a pod of floaters somewhere and a pod of chrysalids somewhere, none of which we have yet discovered. I believe there's two sectoids over here who are part of a mectoid pod that half of it wound up over here. And also, please, J. Robert Oppenheimer, don't fucking shoot Steve Irwin with that rocket. Anyway, the, the pod somehow got magically split up. Half of them came deliciously over here. Half of them came magically deliciously back in the other direction. I'm just going to eradicate what I think is going to be two civilians. It's also... Fantastic work, J. Robert. Brilliantly done. That desk fucking, did it kill your father in a previous life and now you're hell-bent on revenge? That desk shot my Move paw. Now it's gotta pay. Nice fucking work, Rob. Nice fucking work, buddy. This is why I don't bring you on missions, J. Robert Oppenheimer. That right there, that's why I don't bring you on missions. That's why I can't have nice things. It's all your fault. You do this to me, J. Every time I try and rely on you to do basically even something that requires a tiny shred of minimal competence, yep, you find a way to fuck it up. You continuously find a way. All right, so we're going to take Mary Prometheus Shelley out of the air here and try and get her back on the ground. Mary has not, uh, not exactly been providing a lot of benefit to the project since the initial turns where we were outside, so I don't see any disadvantage to just bringing her down to the ground. Maybe we can get her in a position where she can get some shots. We're going to bring Catherine the Great forward. There is a civilian over here. Ideally, she'll run towards us and maybe facilitate a save on the next turn. I mean, that's not going to happen. I'm pretty sure what she's going to do is go find a wood chipper and fling herself into it headlong. Because that's what civilians love to do is dive face first into wood chippers. There's literally nothing they enjoy more. Uh, pancakes, I think we'll just bring... That's not even cover, is it? I was going to say, I think we'll bring you to this cover and have you reload, but that's it's actually not cover. On the move. That sectoid won't even really be able to Let's see Mitch, so theoretically there wouldn't be a disadvantage, or at least not a significant disadvantage, to having him exposed. No to just out of an abundance of caution, right. I'm going to not I'm reloading this thing. And then I think Ernie Shackleton is still the only game in town. You know what? At a 37% oh, Ernie, I'd rather have you overwatch. I really would, buddy. Let's see if the sectoid's going to shoot back. Probably it is, in fact, shooting at Ernest, who's hiding behind a desk. On the plus side, J. Robert Oppenheimer at least didn't destroy the desk, so the cover is still there. It provides a very 
sort of questionably minimal benefit, but it is there. Mary Shelley, we just want to get Mary Shelley in a position where she can shoot down the entirety of this building. So let's get her over here. She will not have vision on anything either with squad sight or regular sight. You know what, Matahari? Can you suppress that guy? Just do that. That's fine. Just keep that sectoid in place. Two damage from a suppression. If we need to, we can eventually suppress him to death. And in fact, probably what we should have done last turn, now that I think about it. There are three civilians remaining on the map. Mitch, could you get up and hollow target this guy? I say, I'm curious if Mitch could maybe get forward and hollow target for us. He can't. I'm a little hesitant to go forward and try and rescue that civilian. Because I am worried about what's behind her. Again, chrysalids somewhere on the map. Also, the chrysalids have been roaming over the map for a really long time, so I have to assume that in addition to those chrysalids, somewhere there's also a big-ass fucking pile of zombies just waiting for us. A big old pile of zombies? Zombies, when they come in a pile, it's when they're most deadly. Like a pile of zombies is the deadliest configuration of the zombies. You may think, oh, look out, it's like a horde of zombies, or a sword of zombies, or, you know, a siege of zombies. No, in fact, a pile of zombies is the worst variety of zombies. It's Pancake's Hedberg gonna dash in. I'm gonna bring Durand up and put her in this half cover. She'll be in a couple distortion fields, and that guy is suppressed, so... Half cover is typically considered vastly superior or... Undesirable is what it's largely considered. You don't ever want to be in half cover. But in this situation, I don't think it's dangerous. Uh, okay. Suddenly something is over here in an area that we swept earlier, which should not have anything in it. I'm going to guess that's the floaters then. So the chrysalid's got to be in the warehouse? Or is that a That's probably a zombie. Now that I think about it. Now that I think about it, the more certain I am that that okay. actually probably is a zombie. All right. Leaving Mary Shelley alone, under ordinary circumstances, I would deem it too dangerous to consider. But there is one thing we got to remember. If it's chrysalids, Mary Shelley can fly. Why is that person not rescued? I am very clearly inside that woman's rescue square, and she is not rescued. Please explain this, Long War. You're good to go. Yeah, good. twice, in fact, good to go. So she's doubly good, Steve. Scanning. <sighs> Long War continues to find ways to make me salty. Matahari, I don't suppose... I was going to say, I don't suppose you could get into the position I need you in, but, uh, yeah. There was no chance. There was always zero chance. Shackleton, you're probably good. Pancakes, let's move you here. There's nowhere good for Annette to be. You know what? Just stay where you're at. Man. Oppenheimer, you might as well reload, because at this point, you are completely useless for largely the rest of the mission. Having sort of expended your supply of rockets, J. Robert Oppenheimer, he's blown his load. Both figuratively and literally. I mean, I think he had an orgasm earlier when he shot like six Seekers and killed four of them with the same rocket. It was the second greatest shot he's ever made in his career, making it the one trillionth best shot in the history of the project, which is still terrible. But he was excited nonetheless because he actually killed something. Good shot from Ernest Shackleton right there. It's a surprising connect. So here comes our zombies and chrysalids. We've been waiting for these guys, which means that in addition to this pod, somewhere on the map is a wad of floaters. Let's just tear the whole building down, guys. What do you say? The whole thing? Let's just uh, let's eliminate the whole building. Is there even a single civilian left, or are they all dead? All right, so a little bit of close quarters combat. Ooh, that's going to sting. That guy is all the way done. Wait, is this two pods of chrysalids? What the hell? Also, where are the floaters, then? If the pod that was over there is... Where are the floaters? Really? I got to know. Where are the floaters? I was told there were floaters. I was told there would be punch and pie. I don't see punch and pie. I was also told there would be floaters. I don't see floaters. I'm less upset about the lack of floaters than I am about the lack of punch and pie, because admittedly, I'm a big fan of pie, pretty much any variety. Shoe fly, rhubarb, garden variety, fruit pies, custard pies, mince meat pies. I really don't care. I just like pie. You put something in a pie crust and I will eat it. Ah, uh, Oppenheimer. Theoretically, this could be the time for you to fire a shredder rocket. And I say that theoretically because I'm going to shoot it here knowing full well is there's a civilian over there. Where? I defy that there is a civilian alive anywhere in that vicinity. Honestly, I'm considering just killing it. It's right there, actually. Nope, that's a dead civilian. Dead civilian. Dead civilian. Are you still... You're still alive and that rocket was going to hit you? No way. I can... Bullshit. 
that rocket was not going... Uh, maybe it was. All right, well, I guess we'll bring it back a little. I mean, Jay Roberts probably going to scatter it into her, so it's completely Pleasure. pointless. But this makes him feel like a big man. He likes to get out the big gun and shoot the rockets. That scatter was remarkably effective. The only way Jay Robert ever does a fantastic job, by accident. Accidentally effective, that's the Jay Robert Oppenheimer motto. So we got a lot of these guys really hurt. That has very tangible benefits in for Mitch Pancakes Hedberg and a potential in the zone. You know more about this than I do. Yeah, shut up, Annette. I've really, Annette, I, I hate her so much. Annette's combat chats are the worst shit ever. They're just awful. All right, so let's go for these zombies. There was some more stuff back there. Annette, please. You don't have to announce that you're throwing a grenade. We all saw you pull the grenade out. We all saw you prepare to throw the grenade. We all then saw the grenade leave your hand. We knew it was coming. It's fine. We need to take a look at what's in this room and whether or not we can handle it. Catherine the Great is a good choice for that. There's the floaters. Fantastic. Heavy floater? One. Regular floaters. Alright, so we knew there were two pods. Catherine is not in fantastic cover, and there are three chrysalids here, which is probably more than we're going to be able to get. We can kill that one. Sure. Now we got to decide. Continue with the chrysalid assault, and maybe not get them all. Or run the hell away. How far away is Mitch Hedberg? That's going to be... You know what? Mitch is close enough. We can make this work. I trust in Mitch Pancakes Hedberg. Not a good time, Hari. I somewhat trust, although admittedly slightly less. Good solid start on that heavy floater, though. There's Mata Hari justifying her presence on the mission. Thank you, Mata. I appreciate your contributions to the Xcom project. They have been significant and timely. That guy is not injured. Well, we definitely have to shoot that man. So he's very badly injured, and Steve Irwin can definitively close him out. So let's have Steve take his can't-miss shot. That man is all the way dead. Dead and gone. Yep, he's dead and gone. Don't you mean, dead and gone, mate? I mean, come on, Steve, you're you. Oh, Annette Durand is standing right in the open in vision of a heavy floater. So we know what Ernest Shackleton is going to be doing, and that's throwing a shadow device. Mitch. 63 is acceptable. Even if Mitch were to have missed that, and I don't really think there was likely that he would have, but even if Mitch had missed that, we would have still been okay. And I'm thinking about deploying two shadow devices on the same turn. One for Matahari. Now nah, it's not worth it. Here's what we'll do instead. Since we got in the zone with Mitch, you have no targets? All right, well, you're going to be on Overwatch then. And since we got in the zone with Mitch, we'll have Mitch throw the shadow device here. Can you get everybody, Mitch? You can, but... All right, Mitch, we can't afford a Michael Jackson moment here. There's one tile where this is covering everybody. We really got to hit that spot, pal. There you go. We can't have a Michael Jackson moment where our nose falls off and we leave ourselves hanging out in the fucking open, badly exposed, and get annihilated. Here comes a very expected grenade. This thing's already exploded, so... It's only going to do some trivial damage to Catherine the Great. Panic. Oh, she's really taking a lot of fire here. A hit on Catherine the Great would be very bad. Doesn't look like they're going to get it, though. Team Alien, where did you come from? Also, where the fuck are you going? <laughs> Salty. Mary Prometheus Shelley's absolutely going to kill that heavy floater. Honestly, though, the heavy floater has sort of done his thing. The damage is done on that one. He already delivered the grenade. We're going to have to have Catherine the Great fall back, despite the fact that what I really want to do is have Catherine the Great go find that friggin' crystal wherever the hell it ran off to. There must still be one civilian somewhere it's decided hasn't died and really needs to die. Matahari, what can you do? Nothing. Duran, nothing. Mitch, nothing. Catherine the Great can see one guy. She does not have lightning reflexes, though, so taking Catherine out is monumentally stupid. Is there any place we could get Steve in full cover? Heading out. Possibly draw that Overwatch. Well, I mean, the full cover we made happen. The Overwatch, Overwatch. Aye, aye. not so much. Shackleton. I mean, we could take Mitch up there. Nobody's going to be able to throw a grenade at Mitch and half cover is full cover. That's All right, Mitch. You're going to have to take one for the team on this one, pal. Little lightning reflexes I'm pulling out the overwatch. Going to help keep Catherine the Great safe from that floater. Multiple overwatching floaters, though. Floater sentry with overwatch as well. 
Mitch staying strong. The pancakes are indefatigable. It doesn't matter what you do to those pancakes. You can't make them not light, fluffy, and delicious. Mitch Pancakes Hedberg, he's the most delicious stack of pancakes known to humanity. He's light. He's fluffy. He's delicious. He's tasty. There's nothing you can say bad about the pancakes. He's not just exciting at first, and then by the end, you're fucking sick of him. Position Mitch confirmed. Pancakes Hedberg is fucking top shelf all the way through. We're going to throw a little patch here oh, at uh, Catherine the Great. She's a little more seat. banged up than I'm comfortable with. Jay Robert, how do you feel about maybe another rocket? I mean, I'm sure probably not good, but... Uh, you know, it, it could maybe do something. Please don't slam it into a wall and kill everyone. Don't shoot it into the desk at your feet. If you're going to scatter it, scatter it. Into an irrelevant window is fine, actually. Yeah, it's, it's good. Another reason why engineers are better than rocketeers, because grenades will go through a window, not hit it when they, not explode when they hit it. So you're going to reload. Hedberg, I mean, we could have you take a shot, but there is still a chrysalid over there, so I think Overwatch is definitively a better plan for you. Annette, Overwatching as well. These floaters are going to keep us pinned down. That's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to keep us pinned down while the chrysalid tries to hunt down the few remaining humans. Shelly, what do you got? 80%. Could generate a kill. This is going to waste the double tap, though. Uh, you know what? Doesn't really matter. We'll need to move. A kill here is more useful. Mary Shelly drives one in one side of its head and out the other. In one ear and out the other is the Mary Prometheus Shelly motto. Mitch, you have what's going to be tantamount to a terrible shot. And you know, I'm still going to have you go over here and take Live in dangerously with Mitch Hedberg. I too like to live dangerously, in that I take ridiculous chances for very tangible benefits. That's the Mitch Pancakes Hedberg way, that's the Austin Powers way, and that's the Target way we like it. Up. Yeah, where did that chrysalid go, by the way, guys? Um, it's a little dangerous. You don't have a motion tracker anymore. <sighs> I need motion tracker so I can find the chrysalid. Yeah, I know where the floater is. It's not what I'm worried about. Worried about the no, chrysalid. That's not. the one I'm looking for. Don't want it sneaking up on... Uh, Steve. Okay, so the chrysalid is over in this vicinity. We'll bring Steve coming. to here then. Put Steve on Overwatch. I guess there's maybe a civilian back there? Rising, Commander. I say that with the rising questioning intonation because I'm, I'm pretty sure there almost can't be a civilian back there. Roger, Overwatch Standing. for you, Durand. Just give me a minute reload. to reload. Yeah, Annette, please. Please, for the love of God, shut your pile. I've, I've had such beyond an asshole of you right now. So far beyond an asshole. I've had dozens of assholes full of you. Okay, that's good. Chance for a squad site shot. Oppenheimer. Sure, why is that particular piece full cover, but the rest of it half cover? Is it the printer? Is that what it is? Is it a stalwart Hewlett Packard brand printer that makes it extra durable? Is that what we've got going on here? That's real bad. Oh, I thought that was an actual person getting killed and said it was just another one of these irrelevant civilians. So that means there's one civilian left. And here comes Steve with his Overwatch. This chrysalid is not going to be able to make it to us. It's just straight up dead because Steve Irwin doesn't fuck around. It's right, mate, Steve Irwin. Not taking any chances. When it comes time to kill, Steve Irwin, he brings the pain. Steve is ready, willing, and able to kill at a moment's notice. And... Just to make sure we have line of sight on these floaterous bastards next turn, we're gonna go up, up, and away here. This what? What's going on? This will not draw Overwatch. Why can I not be in this tile? It's because I only have one fuel left, is it? You won't let me be in the air, even though I can very clearly, definitely be in the air. Go to hell. Seriously, go straight. Fucking hell. Cutting ignition. Yeah, I hate you. Please be aware that I hate you and everything you stand for. So. Interesting. Well, we might as well do this. Look at this, folks. Three friggin' civilians saved. This is a big damn heroes moment for Project XCOM. The biggest of damnedest heroes we are right here. We've proven it today. Big damn heroes? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, we are. Matahari is in a bit of a pickle. Double 53s, either one hits it, will kill that man. 83% on a panic. You know what? Probably better. Let's throw the panic. There we go. I really don't want him flanking Matahari and killing her. We can't have a flanked Matahari. That could spell her doom. 
we can now that that guy's panicked and irrelevant we're gonna bring old jay robert up jay robert's just gonna take an ordinary garden variety plasma carbine flank shot that guy has covering fire i can't get lucky enough to have jay robert oppenheimer be the guy that gets shot man. no longer a threat what was that pile of shit behind that dead floater that was horrible looking Oh, it's a guy that's flensed. His skin has been... Okay, that's awful. All right, maybe the aliens have gone all... You know, I don't think maybe is the operative word here. I think the aliens have definitively gone all house bolting on us and Ramsey's out there fucking flaying bitches. That's not cool, man. It's not cool at all. Pancakes, a little shotgun surgery. That may be into mission. Nope, there are still aliens somewhere. Or possibly, and more likely, zombies is my guess. Look out, folks. Zombies. Zombie bastards. Any dark I'm putting you in a... You know what? Being in a dark corner is literally the safest play you could be in XCOM, and that you really shouldn't be complaining about being put in a corner. Corner full cover? It doesn't get a whole hell of a lot better than that, Annette. And you bitch about it. Don't stick baby in a corner. Fuck you. I'll put baby in a corner whenever I want. Baby was kind of a selfish bitch, really. There's a sectoid running around back there. Well, Okay. It's, it's a sectoid, so, I mean, it's not the end of the world. I'm pretty sure that guy is literally the only game in town, so... We're just gonna pin him down under a steady progression of Overwatch fire, and eventually, I'm guessing, probably Steve Irwin or Catherine the Great will chase him down. Let's just double-check and verify. Trust, but verify. Make sure that he is the last. Yep, alright, so we're in a Last of Us kind of situation here. That sectoid is, in fact, the last of the last. Can we just run up and kill him? Where did he get off to? I didn't see. Um, yes, let's come to here. If we can get vision on him, maybe we can go for a run and gun. Oh, he's right there. Can we miss? Nine, um, I'll risk a 95%. Adjusting aim. That's that's why you don't do that, folks. Yeah. I said I'll risk a 95%er, and yeah, yeah, fuck me, I suppose. Thanks, XCOM. No, nah, appreciate Already it. That's good. 95% from Steve Irwin. What do we get? Uh, I don't fucking miss. That's. I deserve that. I'm I did. I deserve that, XCOM. I deserved it. You're right to punish me. I deserve it. I simply should have used the run and gun and made a 100% shot. I should not have taken the risk. I am going to let Steve get some payback on that one. Goddamn right, Mike. No alien fucking treats Steve Irwin like that and gets away with it. This son of a bitch is going in a bag. In a box or in a cotton. 28 aliens killed in Operation Sacred Chant. A meager three civilians saved. Feeling real good about myself. Really, really good. Really good. Did I mention I was feeling really good about myself? Because I'm feeling real good about myself. <sighs> Maybe my sarcasm isn't appropriate, but it's really the only fucking tool I have at my disposal to express my salt. Also, we have 8 trillion more uh, enemies in the air. Catherine the Great legitimately hurt. She's going to be down for 13 days. Annette Riff Durand picking up a promotion that I don't give a single fuck about. We'll give Annette suppression. Eventually, she might get mayhem. One day, we might actually be able to turn her into a competent trooper who isn't a boat anchor every time we take her out. 13 Illyrium we did pick up, which is beneficial. The rest of this stuff I don't give a shit about. Somehow, we got meld. I'm genuinely confused about that. Panic in Brazil has increased. Panic has increased across in South America. Commander. Let's go take a look at this, because we also want to take a look at the 75... Yeah, fuck. This is why it was pointless. There's nothing we could have done. Even if we had gone and saved 18 of 18 civilians, Brazil was still going to be in withdraw from the project levels of panic. And also, we're going to get the same thing going here in the United States. We're going to get probably enough panic to cause the United States to go into withdrawal mode and possibly enough rollover panic that it takes Mexico along with it, which is brilliant. That means we have to do two more base assaults, assuming I just don't straight up say fuck it and not care about base assaults at all, which I may just leave them. I, I'm, I'm the only reason I might do them is to go get the resources because they are fantastic sources of Illyrium. How many, uh, just out of curiosity, I have four outsider shards. I could make skeleton keys then if I wanted to. The latest contact turned out to I don't be have a skeleton key. Probably either. just another drunk pilot who fell asleep on a long haul. No, oh, those drunken pilots falling asleep behind the wheel of their plane. Boy, there's nothing fucking funnier than that, Bradford, is it? Especially when they crash into gigantic large buildings and kill massive scads of the populace. Fucking hysterical every time, Bradford. Ah, uh, drunken pilots killing their entire complement of passengers. Hilarious, Bradford. Hilarious. 
We don't have a skeleton key. I'm curious what a skeleton key costs to build. No, skeleton key's right here at the top. It's not really... It takes... I would say it would be a waste of 40 Illyrium to build a skeleton key and go into an alien base. The truth of the matter is, though, it wouldn't be a waste. It would be a benefit, because we would actually make that 40 Illyrium plus a whole bunch extra back. And this is why I don't care about these terror missions, because... If we lose the project, it opens up the opportunity for a base assault. Honestly, our performance doesn't matter anyway. The aliens are going to get the base. They launched three terror missions two days or five days before the end of the month. So let's go take a look. Yeah, I'm aware that panic in Brazil is a problem. One of the UFOs has since disappeared. The last time we looked at this map, which was literally seconds ago, there was another UFO in the air. Contact detected. That's an assault carrier. So this is another terror mission that's going to Canada. What happened to the other large UFO that's mission was terrorized populace? Because there was another one. I'm not crazy. There's another Skywalker. Luke has a sister. We all know about it. <sighs> you know what? I, I, I honestly don't care. I've had a fill of XCOM for today. I gotta say, saw a Reddit thread that said that terror missions are typically what ends a section of a section, section, a session. People stop playing terror missions at the end. That's like what causes them to be like, I've had enough XCAM today because they're so unsatisfying. Unlike the regular game where saving one civilian is good enough and then any additional civilians you save gets you extra bonuses, more panic reduction, more cash and whatnot. Terror missions in a long war work the opposite way in that they sort of punish you from the start and all you can do is abate or somewhat negate the punishment that you're gonna get by getting extra civilians. It really works in a sort of negative reinforcement, and positive reinforcement, as B.F. Skinner has proved, is vastly more effective. Anyway, I've complained probably enough about the particulars of Build 15 for one day. I am prone to do that, and I'm going to wrap things up. If you enjoyed this episode of No Action Theater, you might consider dropping a like down in the comments section. Of course, your support does really mean a lot. And if you'd like to see more in-action, boring, dull gameplay, and soporific voice of our host, you might also consider subscribing as well. We post new episodes of XCOM every single day. Man, I can drop in and out of the Alistair Cook impression pretty much at will. It's like the one impression I do that isn't an abomination unto God. And if you'd like to hear me do it again, hey, consider subscribing. New episodes every single day. Right now, thanks very much for watching. Sir Alistair, the host of No Action Theater, and myself are gonna call it a night. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.